Good evening and welcome to this Kick Up Your Bum Weight Loss Tips 2023. I am Susan Booth. I'm just going to wait for a few people to come in so that I can see that I am actually live. If you're coming in, just say hi in the comments. I am going live in a couple of groups and on my live Facebook page today so that we can get some motivation. Um, it's January. I really feel like everybody is very interested in getting healthy um, and finding their nutrition again and probably losing weight because that's what everyone seems to always want to do in January. Now, those that know me um, know that I ran a well-known slimming and exercise club for 15 years. And so and this is actually my 26th January of teaching exercise to a certain age of women. And these women are 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 plus. And over those years, I have helped thousands of ladies to get a little bit trimmer, a bit stronger, more mobile for the rest of their life and longevity. So tonight is day one, and we're going to come on every night around 6 p.m. for the next few days, maybe next week. We'll see how we go. Um, this relies on you commenting lots of questions. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll come back and look at them in the end. Um, I can see that I'm somewhere already. If you um, are there, just say hi so I can see. And uh, I know I'm actually talking to someone. But if you're on the replay, that's great. Put hashtag replay so that I can see. And if you've got any questions, put those, even if you're watching this on replay, because I like to go in and answer those questions. Now, Tonight, we're going to find a start point. Hello, Facebook user. I don't know who that is, but hello. Thanks for joining me. We're going to find a start point. It's really, really important to know where you're coming from. Where are you starting from? Now, January seems to be an easy time to do this because we find that a lot of people have been overeating. You may have been drinking more alcohol than you used to. And this is kind of a restart for many people. So it's a little bit easy for coaches like me to come at you, you know, with all angles of motivation. But over my years of teaching ladies, coaching ladies, what I found was the biggest thing that helps them is the accountability. Would you agree with this? Put yes below if you agree that accountability is where it's all at. Now in the age of in the internet, you have all the information there. You can go and download loads of recipes. You can download loads of um, menu plans and everything. And then you, you know, you know what to do. You know what to do. You can look at nutrition. You can do a nutrition course yourself if you want to. But what you don't have is somebody at your back, kicking your bum. And that's where I come in. And we really want to come at this in a positive attitude. So let's think of all the optimistic things that you will create and get if you start this program or start something, start some habit change. Because what it all comes down to is just doing little tweaks. And little tweaks can make a massive difference. But the key element to this is the need to be consistent and that means something that you can do that you can carry on for the rest of your life if possible now where i'm coming from now is i'm 55 and at 50 i created a longevity program like a coaching program which looks at all elements of lifestyle and we're going to go into that in the next few days but today i want to talk about why are you eating why are you eating those extra things because um, let's go through them. There's 10 different reasons why we might actually be eating. And I'm going to look them, uh, go through them now. If you want to put in the comments that you are that person or you are that kind of eater, let me know. Pop it in the comments. Or you can write these down on a, on a journal. Get yourself a pad and start writing this stuff down. Because actually by writing it down can make a real big, huge difference. So you kind of... Um, Otherwise, you're kind of in denial. <laughs> okay, so if you write it down on a pad, all these different 10 things, and I'll go through briefly what they're about. So often we don't eat just because we're hungry, do we? We eat for lots of variety of reasons. And number one is you can uh, be eating because you're at a special occasion. You're going out and about and you're at a social occasion. And let's face it, in the UK, a lot of our social occasions do relate to food. And what the what's you know, let's go out for a meal, let's go and around to someone's house, eat food. Now, if this is the case, now I think January is the best case for this because 
generally people tend to stay in in January. So we've got a really good start point here. And if you are going out, you just need to choose wisely. If you're going to want to really hammer down this for the month of January at least, if you're just going to set yourself that month target to start with, which is a good idea, then you might need to just make some better choices at the going out occasion. So that's one of those where you're a little bit out of control. That's OK. Don't worry about it. I'll talk about the 80-20 rule in the next few days. The second one is because food is readily available. Now, let's face it, none of us are going to starve, are we? There's food everywhere. There's supermarkets in every corner. They're open 24-7 now. Um, there's so many eat out, you know, um, uh, ready meal places to get, ready meals. Food is everywhere and it's available to you. And it is even in your house as well. So one tip number one here is to go into your cupboards and pantries and your fridges tonight or tomorrow morning if you really focused you want to do this and grab out all the stuff like maybe you've got some mince pies left or some chocolates and pop them all in a different place and put all your treats and things like biscuits and crisps and things you know that you really want to start sort of getting rid of now for January pop them somewhere else so that you've only left with your basic nutrition that your body needs so it's again we'll go over in the next couple of days now, the third way is that other people are forcing you to eat. Now, are they really? Or is someone really sitting down and going, you must eat, eat this, eat this? Because that's not normal. <laughs> OK, so just check if that is actually happening. Because other people are eating, you've got to eat. So if you've got a partner in your house and he likes to nibble all night or she likes to nibble all night, um, maybe the kids are there nibbling because they're eating, you feel you should eating. You know, this is... a uh, a difficult situation, I understand. But we need to come from an optimistic uh, viewpoint here and really focus down on why you want to do this, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, clean plate syndrome, is that what it is? When you were a little girl, did your mum say, right, clean that plate and then you can have something sweet. Make sure you eat all your food. Now, really, this comes down to portion sizes, doesn't it? So if you give yourself smaller portions throughout this month, then of course you can clean your plate and that's a good solution to that one. If not, just check, do you need to eat all that food and slow your eating down, eat at a table and think to yourself, right, I'm gonna eat this food and then I'm gonna stop, rest, check in with myself, am I full now, am I feeling full? and then stop when you feel full. Now, feeling full is probably an unusual feeling for you, or it might be a usual feeling where you actually feel full, where it's right up to the top of, you almost feel it's in your, in your throat. So, you know, think about feeling full as your tummy is full, you feel satisfied, and on a hunger scale, you, you're scoring about six or seven, where um, uh, 10 is where you're absolutely full, and zero is where you're starving hungry so you six or seven when you've finished that meal are you bored now again this can be usual in january it, i see this a lot you know it's dark nights that you, four o'clock the curtains are drawn aren't they and what are you going to do for the whole of the evening so try if you can to set yourself some of the targets doing other lifestyle tips which we're going to talk about in the next few days um other things that don't involve food and they and then you can actually start to bring those into your life as well. So some positive uh, mental attitude towards doing something different. Maybe you've got a jigsaw on the go. Get the jigsaws out. Do something with the hands where you're not involving anywhere near the kitchen if possible. Are you eating because it says it's time to eat? Now, this is a big um, issue here. Are you getting up and you're having breakfast because everybody said you've got to have breakfast in the morning. You've got to have it you know, within the first hour of eating, because that's a complete myth. If you don't feel like you want to eat breakfast in the morning, you can lengthen it out if you want to. In fact, we're going to talk about time-restricted eating in another evening chat, but this is actually quite good for your body. So if you feel like you want a brunch, say, for instance, around 10 and 11 o'clock, you can go for that if you, instead, and then go for a main meal later on in the day. So you're actually only having two meals a day, and that's absolutely fine. You don't have to go with the clock. Now, I understand if there's other people in your house and you want to have them regularly eating three times a day, then that is uh, an issue. Again, it comes down to portion size and eating less on the plate at the time that you eat with everybody else. Are you thinking, well, actually, food is really cheap and free. Uh, in uh, lots of cases, it's around you all the time. And we've talked about that before. So are you eating 
uh, reasons because you, you're in the shop and there's like the maybe that I haven't been in the supermarket yet this year, but sometimes it's like the the they've got the um, celebrations on offer two for a fiver and things like. Are you doing that instead? Are you bulk buying because it's there and it's ready available? Just check that that check yourself with that and uh, what's the nutritional content of that food that you're going to actually buy that's cheaper and is it actually a sort of um, not worth it in the end? Now, this is a big one. You feel tired. If you feel tired and sluggish, your body is automatically going to crave sugar and it's going to want to eat that sugar. It's just what happens. And it's actually your gut microbes that are shouting at it, saying, can't eat more sugar when you're tired. And it's to do with your stress hormone cortisol as well. So this is an unusual feeling. So let's think about the tiredness in the sleep. We'll talk about that in subsequent week, uh, days. But tiredness is a big issue. So if you can, dark nights anyway, go to bed earlier. Let's get some more hours of sleep into our lives. Now we've got a chance to do that. If you're not going out as much, let's really focus it in on uh, uh, sorting out that tiredness. Now, one way to do that is also when it is daylight in these dark days, get outside and start to see the sunlight as well, because that can help regulate your sleep patterns as well, really well. So get outside when it's bright and then go to bed earlier if you can, but try not to eat instead. Think about the, that you're eating the meals that you need that will fill your body to be nutritionally available for you and your energy levels and your um, craving levels and your mental health and all that kind of thing. Are you eating to, um, what else have I got up there? I've got a little uh, sheet up behind you. Um, are you eating because of emotional needs and you can't cope? So this is a completely different issue and just really need to start to focus within and have a really little sit with yourself in stillness. Maybe write down and journal what those issues are. It really does help to actually write things down. Just download your brain. If you're coping, there's a lot going on in your life, write it down and think about them writing it in two lists. So the list on the right will be the things that you, you are, are happening to you in your life, whatever circumstances they are, and you can't control them. Write those down. And then on the other side, on the left, write down the things that are happening in your life that you can actually control and you could probably take an action towards making them better in your life. So that's a good way to start. I mean, that's a big topic. Now, have you got any questions? Let me know. I'm having a look in the comments now. Um, that's what I really want to talk about today. Now, in the next uh, tomorrow, we are going to talk about our 24 tips that I suggested we're going to do. And these are lifestyle tips and tricks that will help you lose weight at this tricky time of your life. Um, now, you can actually download this document and I'm going to give you the link when I've come off this live and it looks like this is a document there which has uh, tips and tricks of um, longevity and we're going to go through that's like a checklist so if you want to you can download that tonight go through it and you they're quite self-explanatory but I will go through them over the next few days and you can tick off the ones that are already happening in your lives now I've compiled this list from years and years and years of practice with um, as I say certain age of ladies and thinking about your longevity because really what do you want to make these habit changes for now it's all right saying oh i want to lose some weight but actually that's not specific enough you want to make this achievable and you need to make it consistent now many of my ladies their aim is to keep mobile into later life keeping a healthy weight so their joints aren't stressed and just feeling happy within themselves. And really those three main things are really important. If you are sort of similar age to me or above, you may want to make sure that you stay mobile and strong throughout the rest of your life. And these tips are gonna help that. Rather than saying weight loss, that's it, that's your focus. That's a little bit shallow really. But actually, if you do these 24 things, the side effect will actually be weight loss and the weight will start to drop off you when we really attack those things. So if you want to, I'll put the link in the groups and you can go up into my website. You just put your email address in and it will send you that document straight away. You can uh, print it off and tomorrow we'll start to talk about those tips in a bit more depth. And I'll show you how you can focus on them. But first of all, tonight, download it. 
and then tick off the ones that you're already doing. So you can give me a score out of 24. And you, again, put this on the bottom in the comments, how many out of the 24 you're already doing them. Fantastic. That's really optimistic, positive start. And then we can look at the ones that you're not doing at the moment and then just choose. You're going to just choose three of those ones that you're not doing at the moment. And then we're going to move forward and then make those strong habits that become positively and consistent within your life as it is today. So I hope some of that stuff has helped you and it's started to kickstart your mind. You really do need this prep work, really. It's quite important that we talk about why we're doing this, why we're eating, because you know what? You can't over out ex you can't out exercise the food that you put in your body. So weight loss is your goal. It's the food that we need to sort out, not the exercise. We're going to talk about that again in the next few days. I'll go into depth a bit more about that. You know, obviously exercise is good for other things, but exercise is not your main focus here. The food that you put in the mouth is. Okay, I'm going to sign off now. I don't want to go on for too long. And uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments and please do download that longevity tip form. And then we'll talk about that. I'll see you tomorrow night at six o'clock. Cheers.